Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one yet again based on one of your new suggestions. This one having to do with an interesting monster that is a mishmash of sorts, a hybrid, if you will, between a regular person and then also a regular animal. And it apparently dates back to the days of the Greeks. I'm a little suspect though when it comes to this truly being an animal, a cryptid, or a monster that existed back then. I think it truly is more of a metaphor or something else that I'll explain here in just a moment. But as always, I leave these up for debate. And then that way, when I present these videos, it's up for yourself to decide what you think when it comes to these entries. Are they for real or do they have some kind of other alternative explanations associated with them. In fact, you're looking at a representation of it now. It has a very interesting name too. It's known as the Donestre. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Donestre. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with this hybrid type monster. So what was or is, because it could still be out there to this day, Donestre? Well, you have to go back again to the days of the Greeks. In fact, this was during the time period of Alexander the Great, and that's when these creatures were prominently featured in several items there. So they're this. They're basically a mishmash of a person, a human, in other words, with a lion. But instead of, let's say, having a lion's body and a human head, instead it's the other way around. It's a regular human body, but it has a lion's head on top of it, a proud lion's head. You know how lions have those domestic, majestic type heads, the ones that just have just those thick furs, that thick mane, the proud teeth, and so on. That's essentially what you have here. Here you have something involving a human butt with a lion's head. Other than that, there's really nothing else that stands out extraordinarily associated with it, like nothing else like in terms of long claws or any other type of attributes. No, it's just pretty much a regular person with a lion's head. And so apparently they were there in those parts of Greece and in other parts of Europe. In fact, their origin is considered European. And the way that they came about is this. People would interact with them if they were travelers. So in other words, if somebody was traveling from point A to point B, from one land to another land, that's where these Donestres would come out. But here's where things take an even further interesting twist. They were initially not considered dangerous to the travelers. In fact, they were actually quite friendly. Travelers would state that they would come about, they would introduce themselves. One would presume then that they would be speaking whatever, you know, English or whatever type of native language that they had there at the time. And then as they were doing so, they would help these travelers come about to their location, make sure that everything is good to go, and then um, see that there's no harm's way, at least at that point, when it comes to these specific travelers. They would befriend them 100%. But then where the twist comes is this. Once that was done, they would then devour the travelers, eat them whole, basically, right down to the bone, but then leave the decapitated head as is. So the only remaining parts of the travelers, after they were befriended, after they were taken to their new land and then nature, everything was set up, they would in turn eat them. And the only thing left is the actual head itself. And then another act that the Donestre would do that apparently was quite common is this. They would be very mournful about their actions. In fact, they would sit by the decapitated head and then just either cry or have some kind of sad face. Like they were just mourning, like a loss of their friend. And this was something, of course, that was done through their very own actions. In fact, the way I read it was this. It's almost like it was an uncontrollable action by the Donestre. In other words, that they clearly knew that it was going to happen. They had no control over it, but there they were making sure that they were still making good friends with these travelers and acting with them in a very friendly manner. And then once that would happen, that's when the uncontrollable urge would just pop up, either just randomly or it was planned. It was going to happen at a certain point. And then when that occurred, that's when they would devour them and then mourn for them afterward. That's the impression that I got when I was reading this information. It was the idea that these things, as intelligent as they were, as multilingual as they were as well, 
as I mentioned a minute ago, they did manage to speak several different uh, languages. Here, they were all of a sudden eat the very humans that they befriended. Isn't that weird? Isn't that something that's just pretty out there, right? When it comes to cryptids and monsters, even for this channel, when it comes to that. It, again, I read it just as a 100% uncontrollable urge that like they can't stop what they're about to do. And then when it happens, it happens. And that's why they're so mournful because they wish they probably could have stopped it, but it just couldn't be stopped. And so there they were sitting next to their former friend and it was all due to their fault. But no one knows essentially what else happened with these uh, Donestres, what occurred with them, their locations now, and so on. But here are the theories as to what they really were. And again, as I was mentioning at the beginning, why I believe this is more in the lines of a metaphor. Researchers have stated that it turns out the Donestre may actually just be a symbol that was created by the Greeks to showcase how travelers lose their identity whenever they go to another culture. So whenever they move to a foreign land, they in turn end up losing the very culture that they had their entire lives. Either they've adopted a new culture or the new culture basically usurped their current culture or their existing culture um, without, you know, any kind of, of restrictions. Like it was just done as is without any whatsoever prevention from that person from stopping it. And so that's where these Donestres were almost created like, I don't know, caricatures, some kind of representation, symbolism, metaphor, I mean, you name it, it could be something along those lines. And, and that's where the Greeks created this to showcase, here's what can happen if you move out of this country, go to another country, you're going to lose your identity, you're going to lose your culture. It's almost as if something else who was very friendly at the beginning to accept you to come in is now going to eat up everything that you had in terms of your identity, in terms of where you came from. And then it'll be, that's it, you'll be gone, at least symbolically, you'll be gone at that point and you'll be part of the new culture there. But that's a good idea. Like, I think actually that's where it makes more sense. I think that's where these Donestri came about. Kind of like today, if you look at any of those political cartoons, how they show like grotesque animals representing certain political figures and so on people in the future might think were they really you know giant donkeys and giant elephants and giant pigs and so on that were there you know visiting buildings no but i think that's what was happening back then like this could probably be the closest interpretation of that that the Donestri is merely somebody drawing a metaphorical item showcasing what they thought could be something else like a meaning of something else altogether and other results state that it could be just tales exaggerated tales from people stating that they run into these things and then of course there was never any real proof associated with them and so on but those are just some of the theories as to what the Donestre truly is and I kind of seem to side on that part just because if it was really a culture like something in terms of a race of these creatures, I think there would be more associated with them, more in terms of 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 drawings and written manuscripts and detailed encounters and so on. I think there would be more of that, but who knows? Those are just my thoughts on there. But if anybody has any more info, anything else I might have missed, then please Post those comments below. What about those of you there in Greece now? What about today? Does anybody have like any local info on these creatures? Maybe stuff that you read there in school or stuff that somebody else has within certain parts of that country. I'd love to hear what the local thoughts are there too. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.